What we're going to look at here is the idea of concordant and average titers. Okay, so we know that titration is all about accuracy. Okay, we're trying to really obtain to a high degree of accuracy a, uh, the concentration of an un of a solution. Okay, and so we're trying to make that a standard solution. We want to know we know that standard solutions are a solutions for which we know the concentration to a high degree of accuracy. So we can say that we're standardizing and the unknown solution. Okay, we're, we're making it into a standard, solu standard solution by figuring out its concentration to a high degree of accuracy. All right, and so in order to really improve this accuracy, what we need to do is repeat the titration process multiple times, okay? If we just do the titration once, we get we get one tighter volume, okay? Then the accuracy will not be that high, okay? There's a high chance of a bit of an error when we do that, you know, which will which will mean that our value for the concentration of the unknown solution will not be fantastic, okay? One tighter means that the accuracy will be very low, okay? So what we do, what we do is we repeat the titration process, okay? We, 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 you know, we, we use lots of fresh aliquots each time, okay, and we do it, you know, three or four or however many times we want in order to obtain the greatest amount of accuracy, okay, so we, use, we do it, you know, a few different times using fresh aliquot each time, and we obtain a different tidal volume, or maybe the same tidal volume, every time, okay, and so what we do is we, is we say, okay, we want to keep repeating this titration process until we have a set number of titers a set number of uh, tighter measurements, which are you know really close, really similar, and then we'll, then that'll that'll tell us that we've got it pretty right, we've got it pretty accurate. Okay, so what we look for is a set number of concordant of concordant titers. Okay, now concordant titers. If we have a set, if if we have a group of concordant titers, then what that means, okay, is that the difference between the maximum tidal volume, max tighter, and the minimum tidal volume in that group. So say we have three tidal volumes, then the difference between the maximum tidal volume and the minimum tidal volume is less than or equal to 0 0.1 milliliters. Okay. So each drop from the burette is approximately 0 0.05 milliliters. So we have, if we have a drop here, okay, then this is approximately equal to 0 0.05 milliliters. Okay. So what we're saying when we're looking for concordant titers is that we don't want to go more than more than one drop above or below the average. Okay. So we say we have you know two titers and they're 0.1 apart. Okay then you know, the average will be halfway in between, and so we can say that we've got one drop past or one drop early, earlier than the equivalence point. Okay? So basically, because each drop is 0 0.05 milliliters on average from the, the majority of burettes that we're, that we're using, we look for a maximum difference between the max titer and the min titer of 0 0.1 milliliters. Okay? So heading into a titration experiment, okay, we want to work out you know, the concentration of, the, uh, of an unknown solution. We might set the bar and say, you know, we can choose a number of concordant titers that we want to achieve for our calculations, okay? So, for example, we may, choose, we may say, look, we want, to we want to find three concordant titers. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. We've, we say, okay, we want it to be, you know, we want it fairly accurate, so we're going to set it at three. You know, if we want it to be really, really, uh, you know, pedantic and really accurate, we could say, oh, we want 100 concordant titers, okay? But that's going to take, you know, far too long for it to still be fun. Um, so we say, we say we're just looking for three concordant titers, okay? And we want, because we want, you know, a fair bit of accuracy, but we don't want to, you know, we don't want to push it, to, you know, once we've got three concordant titers, you know, any more is probably not really that helpful or necessary. So if we're looking for three concordant titers, okay, in a given process, okay, and for example, let's say that the first time we do a, t we do a titration, titer volume is 22.65 milliliters, okay, so we've got that, we write it down, we, uh, we get a fresh aliquot, we do it again, we get 22.72 milliliters as the volume of the titer, okay, so that's good, you know, they're within they're within 0.1 milliliters of one another. Okay, 
then we do it again and we might get uh, 22.61 milliliters. Okay, so we've got three titers. Let's check to see if they're concordant. Well, the maximum is 22.72, the minimum is 22.61, so the difference is equal to 0.11 milliliters, okay? And that is no good. Okay, so, so that's not good. We haven't got three concordant titers here. Okay, so what we're going to do is do it again. We're not going to cross one out. Okay, we're not going to say, oh, you know, we don't have three concordant ones, so we're going to get rid of this one. Okay, because we don't know which one, depending on the size of the fourth titer, we don't know which one will get cancelled out. Okay, we could get another one that says 20, that has a volume of 22.61, or we could get another titer that has a volume of 22.72. So we're not going to choose which one we cancel out. We're just going to do it a fourth time. Okay, and say this time we get a volume of 22.68 milliliters. Okay, so now if we crossed out, then we would have three concordant titers. And, or, you know, another option is to cross out this one and we'd still have three concordant titers. Okay, and in this case, the, uh, the concordancy okay, is the same. Okay, so the difference between, if we crossed out this one, Okay, the difference between the maximum and the minimum is 0.07 milliliters. If we crossed out this one, the difference between the, ma the maximum and the minimum is again 0.07 milliliters. Okay, so that's you know that leaves a bit of room for room for decision making. Let's decide. We'll do it again. Okay, because they're the same, because the difference is the same. Okay, if we average these two, if we average the group with these with this one crossed out, okay, then we're going to get you know a, a given number. And if we average the group with that crossed out, okay, the number's going to be significantly different, you know, maybe by about a whole drop, okay. So what we'll do is we'll do it a third time. Okay, and say this time we get 22.70 milliliters, okay. So it's obvious now that our best bet is going to be to cross out these two. Okay, and now we've got 22.72 minus 22.68. The difference is now equal to 0.04 milliliters. Okay, and that is a great result. Give that a big tick. Okay, so we've got three concordant titers. Okay, so now the obvious thing to do in our next step and to sort of with the rest of calculations is to find an average titer. Okay, because that's really what we want. We don't want to be deal we don't want to calculate three different possibilities for the concentration of the unknown solution. We'll figure out an average and then figure out the most likely possibility for the concentration of the unknown solution. Okay. So all we're going to do is we're going to figure out the average. So we'll do it where we've got a bit more room. So we know that this difference is all good. We've checked that, so we can get rid of this now. Okay, so if we average these three titers, just, you know, pretty stock standard way, we've got 22.72 plus 22.68. Plus 22.70 all over 3. Okay, because we've done three titers, we're adding up their volumes, dividing by 3, just like a standard average. So the average titer is equal to that, okay, and that is equal to 22.70 milliliters. Okay, so we've worked this out. We've, we've, you know, we've done a few titers. They haven't quite been concordant. We've done another one. Okay, we've we've got we've got two possibilities for uh, two different sets of three concordant titers. Okay, and they both s seem to be similarly accurate. Okay, and we can't really choose which. So you know, just for the sake of this experiment, we just we take the liberty and we and we choose to do it again. Okay, and then we get three obviously concordant titers. Okay. And so, from those three concordant titers, we take an average, okay, and then this is the figure that we'll use in our calculations, okay. This is the figure that we'll use in our stoichiometry, etc., in order to work out the concentration of the unknown solution, okay. Note that if we, we could have not done this, okay, we could have skipped that if we'd liked, and we could have chosen either set of these concordant titers here. We could have crossed out this one here. We could have crossed this out. Or we could have crossed this out 
after after we'd done these four tires, okay? But we didn't. We thought, you know what? We can do another one. We might as well. But for ca for the purpose of the calculations, technically we could have chosen, yeah, let's get rid of this. We we'll use the the smaller group of concordant titers, or we'll get rid of the bottom one and use the larger group of concordant titers. They each would have been acceptable. However, it really made sense in this situation to uh, to do a fifth one just to figure out exactly where to go. From there, we figured out an average titer, and this average titer is going to be a lot is likely to be a lot more accurate. Okay, a lot more accurate than if we just left. If we just use this first value here, okay. If we just use this first value here, yeah, 22.65, that's fine. However, by doing it five times, you know, using concordancy and averaging everything out, 22.70 is going to be a much more accurate figure than 22.65. It's going to get a more accurate value for the concentration of the unknown solution.